Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. What you see behind me is my cornfield and it's time to get it prepared to plant for the spring. Now you might wonder what this is right here, already been mowed. What that is, is an experiment that you're gonna see in a video months from now. What we tried to do was create wheat and clover silage. And that video is gonna take several months to develop. That's in process right now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get out here. As you can see, there's corn stalks in this field, a lot of stuff. And what I understand, research has proven that if you plow it under completely green, it just pretty much dissipates and melts underground and it's gone. If I mow it, let it dry for a while, then plow it under, that humus will stay in the soil much longer. I've got several more fields over on the other side of the property. So this is gonna take me basically all day. I'm gonna time lapse a lot of this and get it done quick. All right, I'm gonna take you for a round on here and let you see what I've got growing out here as a cover crop. What I did, I came in to the corn and I planted wheat in between the corn when it was about uh, July, August, something like that. It came up great as you can see. Now something else that I'm really happy about is all the crimson clover that's coming up as volunteer from last crop, the winter before last. And that is gonna really help throw the nitrogen to this, especially since it was growing with wheat, which is not a nitrogen builder. It just, something about it triggers it and it makes it create more nitrogen. Frank, where are you going? You ain't supposed to be leaving, son. Hey, you sneaking away. Hey, hey, what's your rush? What's your rush? Ah. And that's what all these pine cones, you can see tons and tons of pine cones and needles. That's all gonna have to be plowed under. This right here is hairy vetch. That stuff is extremely good for producing nitrogen. And it's sprinkled all through this field. I don't know how it got here. I didn't plant it this year anyway. Maybe it's left over from years gone by. All right, we are over on the other side of the property. You can see that ground over there that's already worked up. You already saw us plant potatoes over there in a previous video. Now we've got this field of clover right here that's going to be corn. This is pretty good clover crop right here. I planted this just right when I planted my corn last year, right in the corn that was that tall. And so, interestingly enough, it worked just fine. <laughs> it, of course, it had shade all over it through the summer when the corn was up. Didn't hurt it a bit, it's still done fine. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mow it, let it dry down. That way I can work it up.
Okay, I got this field knocked out. It'll dry. This wind is really blowing. The sun is very warm. It's going to dry out for a while while I go on and move to the next field or two. It's kind of hard on me to mow such a beautiful field down. I apologize to the bee people in here. I'm probably going to get some pretty hateful comments, but I researched and what I need is nitrogen. I don't need pretty flowers and I don't the bees can find their stuff somewhere else. This stage in the crimson clover's development is prime nitrogen. That's when I need to get it plowed under. And the time is getting on. I've got to get it done. And I know some of y'all think I'm about equivalent of a Nazi mowing down a bunch of innocent civilians. And I apologize for that. I didn't like that any more than you did. Let's move on to another field that won't make you feel quite as terrible about me because it's not as pretty. Okay, as you can see, I had corn there last year. See the old stalks. This here has been a clover field for the past three years and it's getting taken over by grass. And over there is where I had corn and potatoes growing there and on the other side of the grass there last year. That was my crop. So I think this year I'm just gonna put this whole thing in corn and we'll restart this field right here. All right, I got this field mowed. Pretty good sized little field right there. You can see our deer blind. Both of my boys, well, two of my four boys, killed nice bucks in this field. Three of my boys actually killed bucks in this field. Two of them were really nice, and one was standing right there, and the other one was standing right there. Got that on camera. If you like deer hunting videos, you can go to my hunting playlist and see that. Look right over here, we see some really nice blackberry blooms coming on. Every year after they bloom, it comes a cold spell. That's why I'm not planting corn today. I'm gonna plant the clover today, and then the corn will go through the clover in a couple weeks, hopefully, if it all works out. It's about lunchtime, I'm gonna go eat a bite, and I'm gonna put the plow on this tractor. I'm gonna get back over here and get to work. People running and going everywhere. It's a busy time, folks. Busy time. All right, I've got all my fields mowed. The wind has been blowing and drying this stuff out. And it is time to turn it under. I'm gonna time lapse this baby. We're gonna knock this field out. We're gonna knock all the fields out. Hopefully the rain will hold off. I don't know if it will or not. If it don't, what can you do? Let it rain. But if it holds off, we're gonna keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. One thing about this field that's different from a lot of my fields, I plow this all one direction because the way this lays, it's not good to plow it out. And I really don't like to plow it in because it creates a ditch right here. So I plow it all one direction. That means I have to go backwards part of the time, but in a time lapse, that's not gonna be bad at all. Let's get her done. this field knocked out it's about oh it's approaching four o'clock so <laughs> time i get the other fields plowed it's probably gonna be too late to go ahead with my plan so we'll just see what happens let's get over there and start turning some more soil this is the cornfield if you remember where i raised my silage corn last year and i did a test an experiment 
on this field as well and i did this side over here with just rough plowed ground i didn't disc it i didn't till it i just planted corn right in the rough plowed ground that side i had tilled nicely to see what would happen and everybody was shocked to see that the ground that was rough plowed grew corn better than the ground that was tilled pretty in this field instead of plowing one direction like i did in the previous field i'm going to plow out since i've already started plowing that way i've got my furrow over there i'm going to just go around in circles and plow out so in this time lapse that'll be a demonstration of plowing out on the next field we'll do in All right, I got this field knocked out. As you see, plowing out has a disadvantage. The disadvantage being that you have a dead furrow in the middle when you finish up. You definitely don't want to do this multiple years in a row because you will have a pond in the middle of your field. Next year, I need to plow in to fill that back in. Now, obviously, I'm going to be using a tiller out here and I'll be able to fix a lot of that with the tiller, but not all. So. Let's go on to the next field. I'm gonna show you how to plow in. You don't have that issue. You have kind of the opposite issue and your dead furrows will be on the outside edges. Let's get out there and get with it. All right, when you plow in, you start in the middle and you plow. In my case, I got a right hand plow. I'll be plowing to the right. Then when I come back, I'll be on that side plowing back over what I already plowed on this first run. one round this ground I, I didn't think about how hard it was going to be it's not been plowed for at least three to four years so <laughs> it's going to be a little more of a challenge than that other dirt even let's throw this back on time lapse knock the rest of this field out and see if we got any daylight left for planting some clover My tractor about run out of fuel, so I had to run back to the house and fuel up. Supper was ready when I got there, so I went ahead and eat, come right back, and I'm gonna finish this. While I was plowing, I got to thinking the difference between me, a homesteader, and a farmer that actually is a real farmer. They actually pay their bills with what they're doing, and if they don't get done and there's a rain coming, that's not an option. They have to stay in the field and get it done, even if it's all night long. Homesteaders don't do that. We don't. Homesteaders subsidize their income with agriculture. Farmers subsidize their agriculture with income, meaning that my primary source of income is not this. This is just something to sort of, it's just a hobby. The main reason I do it is to insulate me from an economic collapse. So, and another thing is homesteaders generally feed their family off the farm, whereas a farmer generally feeds the rest of the world and goes to the store and buy his grub. Enough of that, let's get to finishing this. The sun is going down. It's starting to get pretty dim. The camera I'm using brightens it up, makes it look brighter than it actually is. And I'll probably, I've just still got a little bit over there, a little bit over there. I'll probably go till plum dark. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close the video out now. You'll be seeing this field a good bit throughout the year as we do our thing. 
raising our corn, cutting our silage, all that good stuff. I guess I should have probably called this video eight reasons why I'm not a real farmer or something like that. And that'd be the hours between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. Because I don't like to work when I'm supposed to be asleep. And farmers do that, not me. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoy plowing. I don't enjoy looking back all day and my neck gets all kinked up. But other than that, I do enjoy it. But we're going to get on out of here. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.